So we're alive. Welcome to I Spy Talk, where we educate, empower, and encourage women to practice safe beauty habits, starting with their eyes and skin. I help you connect the dots between beauty and science. Some say your eyes and skin say more about you before you open your mouth. My name is Dr. Janelle O.D. I'm your host and the CEO and founder of Green Eyes Vision Center and Premier Dry Eye Spa. Thank you for tuning in. Let's chat. Hey, happy Sunday. It's Dr. Janelle, the Dry Eye Mentor, and I'm here with you this Sunday evening, bringing back to you Eye Spa Talk. I have a very special guest with us today. I'm so excited to talk to her. But before we get started, in case you don't know, I'm Dr. Janelle O.D., the Dry Eye Mentor. I love everything optometry, but I have a true passion for optom I'm sorry, ocular surface disease, which is dry eye, and optometry aesthetics. I started iSpot Talk to help, kind of help my patients connect the dots between beauty and science. So we all want to look good, want to feel good and see good, but we want to do that. We'll make sure that we're doing everything to keep ourselves healthy in that process. And then starting a safe environment for patients to have conversations with eye care professionals about things that they could do to enhance their beauty, but at the same time, keeping their eyes safe. So today I have with us today, Dr. Candice Moore. I'm so excited to talk to her. I met her several years ago and she actually used to fill in for me after graduating from optometry school. She is originally from Atlanta. She's a mother. Um, she's a full-time optometrist and I brought her on today because she started a cosmetic line. So we have so many boss women, especially boss doctors who are doing, doing the thing, you know, living their dream being a wife, being a mom. So I just want to find out what inspired her, talk a little bit about her product, and then how that product can fit into a space for optometrists who want to be able to op offer things for their patients that they feel and know is safe and support other optometry women. So hi, Dr. Moore, how are you today? I'm doing well, thank you for having me. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm so excited to have you here. Like I said, I'm so excited for you. I remember you first kind of started this journey in optometry and private practice. Um, I think you've settled in great. And then now you've taken boss moves and going to make it your own <laughs> product line. So I'm excited to learn more. But let's tell the audience, you know, who you are and why you became an optometrist. So I am currently an Atlanta native. I currently practice in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, more specifically in Midtown uh, with a corporate practice. Um, so essentially the reason I became an optometrist was because, uh, after my master's program, I actually did it in vascular sonography. Um, I got my master in health science and vascular sonography and the field was very saturated and it was very hard for me to find a job. So I started my doctorate actually in my late twenties. So I was a non-traditional student, um, you know, still trying to figure out especially with me not being able to, to find a job um, after graduating with my master's. I shadowed a couple of different doctors and I just fell in love uh, with optometry and then, um, you know, decided to apply and here I am. That's awesome. I mentor a lot of girls and I always tell them, you know, at no point is it too late to follow your dreams. So it's good right. to know that, you know, you were able to pivot. And the key that you said to pivoting was like you shadowed, you look at different opportunities that see there were out right. there and see if one kind of spoke to you. So that's impressive. I didn't know that about you. Yeah. Um, and I tell other girls and it's never too late to pivot, but you just got to have a plan and just persevere. Right. So right. That's awesome. A lot of people are concerned about timeline. Um, you know, getting to a certain goal at a certain point or age, the time is going to pass anyway. So if you want to do something, just go ahead and do it. Um, you know, that's that's my word of advice. That's a true statement. The time is going to pass yeah. anyway. So just be productive in that time frame. And I feel like right. everybody gets to their point that they should be at when is their time, you know, and some mm -hmm, of us are mm -hmm. behind, but long as you're happy whenever you get there, that's all that matters. And right. so thinking about that a little bit, you know, were there any obstacles along your journey? And um, at any point, did you want to give up? 
Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as I mentioned before, being that I was a non-traditional student, um, it was several years that passed uh, before I got into my master's and doctorate's program. So um, I had to pretty much like catch up myself with, um, well, like relearning like physics and chemistry, getting all the prerequisites. So that was difficult for me because I was still working full time in the ER. Um, so actually getting into the program, um, I actually graduated from Nova Southeastern University and I did what's called a pre-optometry program. So even though I did well in my master's program, being that I took so long to start my doctorate, they wanted to see that I could actually handle the, the coursework. Um, so I was able to do that success successfully and then also get into the program. And then while I was in the program as well, um, I actually went through a lot of changes as far as family. I had a lot of, um, more specifically, my third and fourth year. Um, I had family members, uh, friends, all in the span of five weeks pass away, unfortunately. So that was very difficult. Um, one in particular, my father passed away, I think it was three days before I was supposed to take part one of boards. And, you know, typically that's the, the hardest part of um, the three parts. Um, so I actually failed that um, because of the extenuating circumstances. So, you know, within those three months of having me to take it again, I really had to like lock in, um, study, and then come to find out my husband and I were expecting. So then on top of that, I was pregnant. Um, and then I had to go through, through, you know, parts one through three pregnant. So there were obstacles, but I never gave up. <laughs> Wow, and I'm here now. Strong woman, okay. Strong. <laughs> you need to be mentoring girls. You know, it's important for girls to see. You know, right. especially in the social media age, we see the end result. We don't That's really true. see the that process people have to take to get there. And exactly. everybody will glorify their end result, but nobody want to admit, true. you know, the struggles right. they had. You know, I failed part one. You know, and mm -hmm, I started mm -hmm. one school and left that school and went to mm -hmm. another. So pretty much every, I would say. Um, physician, doctor, that you know, a lot of us have those type of stories, but the key right, is, that is true. the key is perseverance. And right, so that is um, very true. I think those obstacles probably make you a really good doctor, humanize yeah, you. Yeah. And it does. Right to it does. You. Not knowing your backstory, right. but it just humanizes you as a person. Right. Makes you more relatable so you can relate to, you know, what's going on with them. Um, so I always feel that's important. But yeah, that's good, a little good. bit of um, the obstacles that I experienced in optometry school. And so I'm sure it's starting a business, which we're going to get to in a minute, in the mm -hmm. midst of everything that's going on for the last year and a half to two. We always talk about 2020 being a, you know, a setback because of COVID. A lot of us, 2020 right. is really no different than 2020. Um, we're hoping, you know, business-wise that 2022 is better. But a lot of right. people are launching businesses and finding their passion in the midst of the pandemic. So we're gonna talk about mm -hmm. that a little bit more. So um, ever since the day I met you, you always look fabulous. So <laughs> cosmetics <laughs> and makeup, when I saw that this is what you were launching, I was like, okay, that makes sense because you always look good. Okay, Thank when you, you. Come to, you came to meet me, I was like, I need to get my life, you know? <laughs> I, I try, but I'm not on your level. So when no, you start no, doing no, this, you I'm like, okay, that just like goes you. with her personality. So tell me what inspired you to develop a cosmetic makeup line. So um, it's actually a three part answer to your question. So I have a lot of family members and friends who suffer from sensitive skin. Um, even my son has eczema, um, atopic dermatitis. So finding um, products that work for them that don't irritate their skin is very hard for them. Um, more specifically, my sister. So she has, she's also into makeup and stuff as well, but it's very hard for her to find something that doesn't cause a reaction or, um, you know, irritate her skin. So, and also patients as well. So patient, I had a patient actually ask me like, you know, what products can I use? You know, I've used certain products and it just doesn't work for me. I wish, you know, I could find something that works. So that was kind of my initial reason for doing it. Um, you know, developing a product that can help people with sensitive skin. Um, the second part of it was I actually, um, going back to when I graduated from school, I struggled being a new grad optometrist and being a first time mom. So I actually, 
put other other people's needs before mine. So I let myself go. So even though I was into makeup and everything like that, I kind of put that on the back burner because I put my patients, my family above my own. So um actually and then the third part of it trying to i'm trying to tie it all in uh i actually got furloughed during the pandemic so you know just like everybody else you know who got furloughed is just like wow i just never thought that this would happen to me so being that i had that time where i wasn't working i was like you know what? i always wanted to do this i always have family members patients and everybody always asking me about cosmetics, um, what they can use, I decided to put that energy and that time into developing my own and actually researching, um, developing my own cosmetic line. And then I also fell back in love with, you know, skincare, putting on makeup. I wasn't going anywhere, but it allowed me <laughs> <laughs> to actually dive back into it. Um, you know, especially even yourself, you being a mom is hard, you know, you put yourself um, above, I mean, not yourself, you put everybody else above your wants and needs. And that time actually, that downtime actually pushed me to actually develop the cosmetic line. So you're another person I know that utilized their, their time off, whether it was wanted or not during COVID to have something positive on the other side. And so it's important right. to you know, People think as physicians, you can't get furloughed, you can't get laid off. You know, right. I've been laid off in the past. It's all there. But the point is, what do you do with that time that's off? You know, exactly. some of us need to exactly. just relax. And some of us need that time to kind of reach back and pull for other passions and desires that we had, but we just didn't have the time mm -hmm. to work on them. Right. And so right. I definitely commend you for taking that 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 negative and possibly turning yeah. into a positive energy that's gonna be a revenue source for you, you know, going right. forward. And so honestly, it, it was a, it was a blessing in, in disguise because I don't think if that never happened, I wouldn't have pushed myself to do it. Um, so even though I got furloughed, luckily I'm still working now. Um, but I feel like if that never happened, that I wouldn't have developed the cosmetic line. So it was a, it was definitely a blessing in disguise. Blessing in disguise, and it brought out your inner boss. That's how you know you're a boss. Yeah. <laughs> time that you could be in your feelings and say you know what i'm gonna take this time to regroup come back stronger right. so not only you right. back and you're working but you have other things that you can bring to um a potential patient base and other things that's to make right. you happy that's to me that's mm -hmm, the true mm -hmm. boss. that's why i like to have boss women on here where we can take negatives and turn into positive energy and that helps exactly. me that you know anything exactly. happening to anybody at any point is what do you do in that situation Mm -hmm, and so, mm -hmm. so with that, you know, you developed, brought this concept to idea mm -hmm. during COVID. Was there any setbacks? Is there any obstacles as you were trying to get this product to market? Yes. <laughs> so when I came up with the idea, so pretty much I had to rely on myself, Google, YouTube videos, um, because I didn't have anybody to hold my hand. So it was a lot of late nights early mornings, researching, um, learning about the industry. And so um, once I was able to find, you know, a cosmetic lab to actually develop and produce my product, um, the waiting period, because with the pandemic, everything is shut down. So you don't have the luxury of actually going in, testing the products, um, you know, learning how the process is, is, everything was done virtually. So it was a lot of delays in that. Um, so when I had the idea, I had wanted to launch by a certain point, but I kept getting pushed back because of different processes that happens with the cosmetic line, with them um, developing the product. So it's a lot of um, sending me the samples, me sending it back if I didn't like it, if, if there was any issues. So it was a, a lot of back and forth with that. And then actually once we got it into production and development, um, we actually make our products you know, fresh. So mm -hmm. that takes time. So that was another two, three month process. So when I wanted to launch, you know, in two, three months, it was like, no, nope, you know, we make our products fresh. So it takes another two, three months for it to, for us to finish. Um, and then of course, shipping delays, you know, around the time when it was uh, Christmas time, because I wanted to launch around Christmas time. Um, but, you know, for most people, UPS, <laughs> FedEx, they were FedEx, all backed up. All of them were hot right, right. So um, that was another delay. So 
what I wanted to initially launch in, in, in 2020, I had to, you know, practice patience uh, with that. So that was an, an obstacle as well. But, you know, we're up and running now. I think, well, we launched in May. So um, everything has been, it's still a learning process for the most part, but it's been going very well. So tell everybody the name of your line. Um, what are maybe some signature products in your line? Um, and kind of talk about the ingredients a little bit. A lot of providers that are listening, you know, glam dots is what I call them, pretty ODs. Yes. We want to be able to out offer things to our patients. But at the same time, we want right. to make sure we're doing our due diligence to make sure we're recommending something that is safe for our patients. So talk mm -hmm, about mm -hmm. the line, maybe some signature products and a little bit about the ingredients. Yes. So the name of my cosmetic line is the I Appeal um, Cosmetics. And uh, the first three products that we did launch was a 18 color um, mixture of matte and shimmer, uh, which I have here. Um, and I'll actually show it to you guys. So it's a mixture of matte um, and shimmer eyeshadow. Um, we did a lot of neutral colors. Um, and then also a pop of like pinks and blues and browns and things like that uh, for everyday wear if you so choose. Um, and the next product that we have is also mascara, um, which I will show you here, which is this here, uh, the mascara and then also eyeliner. Um, so uh, another reason why I wanted to launch as well was to also educate my, pa my patients because I'm pretty sure you see a lot of patients who come in who tend to sleep in their makeup or tend to do what's called water lining, meaning that they draw their eyeliner on top of their mybomian glands that leads to cordialums, infections, and things like that. Um, so I, I also wanted to educate my patients on the proper way to use um, to use makeup, and this is the eyeliner here. Um, so all of our products are vegan and cruelty free, meaning that uh, no animal products. Uh, was used in the testing or development of the products. Um, and then just to dive a little bit more as far as like the mascara, um, we tend to, like some people tend to use waterproof ma mascara. Our product is not waterproof uh, just because a lot of people don't know that lash breakage is real, especially when you use waterproof mascara. Um, so they're like, oh, why is my lashes falling out? It's because you're using waterproof mascara. Um, so with the development of the mascara, we, we strayed away from that. It is long lasting, but we uh, did a priority uh, blend of um, emulsifiers, moisturizers, uh, we tried to stay away from unnecessary ingredients to allow the the mascara, as far as the ingredients, to um, you know not dry out your your lashes or your skin. And the same thing for the eyeliner as well. Um, as far as the eyeshadow, of course, we use iron oxidized, um, which is essentially um, a pigment in order to create the pigments of the, the color. So, and then another plus to it as well, um, with the development, it does have a little bit of UV protection as well. Of course, I do recommend, you know, sunglasses um, as far as full UV protection, but this also does provide a little bit of that as well. So we try to stay away from, yeah, sure. Which is this here. I know it's, it, it's like a reflection um, oh, I see. as far as, okay. so, yeah. Um, so yeah, we try to stay uh, away from like unnecessary fragrances. Um, even though we do have shimmer uh, colors, I didn't do any type of glitter because sometimes that can get into the eye, cause um, other issues. Like for myself, I suffer from ocular surface disease, <laughs> which I need to come see you about. Um, you know, my bombing gland dysfunction. So uh, we wanted to create something that doesn't, you know, cause inflammation or irritants. Uh, some of the ingredients helps to actually soothe um, or, you know, create moisture for the application we use in our products. That's important. You know, a lot of women, you know, whoever wears makeup, they don't think about the complications and the possible ramifications right. of not wearing makeup properly. It's just like contact lenses. You know, I say mm -hmm, contact mm -hmm. a friend or a foe. You know, usually if it's a foe, it's because you out of order. And so... Right. 
usually, you know, when we put these things around our eyes, you know, most of us have been wearing makeup since we were teenagers, you know, right. and we usually a little bit more risky in the teenage years, unless you actually have somebody pull you aside and properly teach you how to do things. I always tell right. people about my mom, you know, I couldn't wear makeup until I was 16. But when mm -hmm, I was 16, mm -hmm. she took me and made sure that I knew how to apply makeup. And if she wasn't even right. a big makeup person, I remember back in the day, it was a fashion fair counter. She took me to the fashion fair counter. I had, you know, everything I needed, nothing that was gonna, you know, make me look bad, nothing. I never wore waterproof makeup as far as mascara. Mm -hmm. And you know, you're right, you said lash breakage is real. I was laughing, you know, people still wear waterproof. The couple times that I've put it on, I literally wanna cry because I can't get it off. Right. Like, exactly you know? and then it's so, already a delicate area so you're rubbing and trying to remove yeah. the makeup and then that just causes breaks in your skin and then cause infections bacteria to get in there and then it's just it's just a show for us when they're in our chair right um and then another thing too i always ask like my patients who do come in that wear mascara how often do you throw away your your mascara or your eyeliner oh i've had this for two years i've had this for three years so i'm just <laughs> like what you're supposed to throw away your makeup. Well, as far as your mascara, eyeliner every three months. So we do mm -hmm. also have a subscription service. So um, if you do um, sign up for the subscription services, you know, you, you click in how often you want it every three months. You can always cancel or modify at any time um, so that, you know, you're in the process of developing good habits so that you don't have your eyeliner or makeup or mascara for, for <laughs> two, years. three years. Yeah. That that's actually a smart idea, you know, to have a subscription service. So you encouraging good habits. I like the right. fact that you consider eyeshadow as well. You know, a lot of eye care providers are getting into the cosmetic space and they're doing mm -hmm. lash cleaning um, sprays and serums. I've seen mm -hmm. mascara and liner, but nobody's gone into the eyeshadow, you know, because most right. women wear mascara and liner, you wear eyeshadow too. You know, even right. the magnetic lashes, which I have mine on, but no eyeshadow. So I think that's important because I want to be yes. able to explain the offerings that I have in my office. And so what was right. appealing is the fact that you had the eyeshadows. And mm -hmm, so, um, mm -hmm. so let's talk about where people can go get your products. And I think you said a subscription, but what's the site? Um, um, so it's shop. Um, where you can go shop the products, you know, get what you, you like, what you prefer. Um, and then of course, you know, if there's any questions or anything that like you want to ask me personally, um, it's info at shop. .com. Okay, good. I'm just seeing there was a few questions. Okay. Um, there was a person that was asking, I see Dr. Marin on here. Um, she said, hi ladies. Someone said, we're getting great information. Okay, good. And there's like a it's like a longer question. I can't tell exactly if the person's asking the question. It looks like they have some complications with some of their um, oil glands. And a lot of mm. the oil glands, you know, complications, a lot of times is things that you're putting in or around your eyes that are exacerbating. Right. So the right. talk about cosmetics right. and skincare is important. So I want to mm -hmm. back up a little bit too. So we know now where to get the, the, the products, the name of the products. You can sign up for a subscription service and you should know now how often you should be throwing away your makeup. What about right. eyeshadow? That's why I kind of get, you know, how are people throw them things away? So usually you can with eyeshadow. I still typically tell my patients like six months. Um, you can do up to a year depending on how often you use it. One thing I do stress um, as far as makeup brushes, a lot of people yeah. don't clean their makeup br brushes or their applicators. So they tend to like dip it back into the eyeshadow and use it again. I always try to tell, um, you know, my customers or patients to actually make sure, I know it's probably hard to do, but after every use, try to at least clean it with like, you know, soap and water, leave it to air dry um, before you use the eyeshadow. But usually I tell my patients about six months to a year. Six months a year. I think that's mm -hmm. a good recommendation because usually, unless you have the individual packs, you know, when you have the big palettes, then yeah, six months to a year. Um, and like I said, clean the brushes. That's a really good tip. Right. The and set. then we also have um, on the product, a lot of people tend to forget about expiration dates. Um, so we also have expiration dates as well um, on the packaging as well. Um, I also tell them to, you know, put it, put something in your phone or like a calendar of when you bought the products or actually started using it so that you can actually remind yourself when you need to replace the product as well, um, which is also important. 
So will you be wholesaling these products for doctors to sell them out of their offices if they're interested? Yes. So actually we're trying to launch um, or actually sell our products at a practice in New York. Um, but if you are interested, we're more than happy to send <laughs> to send the product um, to sell in your practices. Um, definitely the email that I mentioned before, info at shop uh, so that we can discuss. Yeah, definitely. Um, like I said, it's the eyeshadow part, you know, yes, and the yes. recommendation goes a long way. And I think women too, now we're creating this error where, you know, sometimes when you go on the doctor, they, you know, you clean your face, don't wear makeup because you don't want them to tell you what you can't do. But if we mm -hmm. create an environment where it's like a safe environment, just like when you're raising right. children, that they right. can come to you and see what they're doing so we can make recommendations that are healthier for them. Um, right. we'll, I think we'll have a complete you know, change in the way we care for our patients. And, and exactly. so it's really cool with optometry to kind of see it going in this space, what I call optometry aesthetics, where we can offer non-surgical things to help enhance your beauty and keep your eyes safe right, at the same right. time. And yeah, so, always, go ahead. I always try to, you know, create an environment, especially with my patients where they're like open and honest, um, that they're able to talk to me about their cosmetic needs, um, I had one patient the other day, of course, she does a lot of Zoom calls. So, you know, she has to apply her makeup and do all things like that. And so she was like getting irritation. I was like, well, did you do like a skin patch test to see what ingredients you're allergic to? So she was like, no, I didn't think, you know, I didn't think about that. So I was like, yeah, so any type of cosmetics um, that you get, because even with my son who suffers from eczema, um, even the most simplest things he's allergic to, like Aquaphor, I just found out found that out the other day and I'm just like what I've been using aqua for this whole time and he's allergic to it so it's always important to do like a skin patch test um not only for like my products but just in products in general just do a, a skin patch test where you apply the product to your forearm wait about 24 to 48 hours um to make sure that you don't have a reaction um if you know if you don't have a reaction perfect you're, you're good to go if you do have a reaction then you're like okay wait you know, maybe I need to find something else. So, um, skin test, skin patch test. You recommend that a lot right. for different things, but cosmetically, especially if you're introducing a new product, um, exactly. because I think you know, you try to go the route as much as possible to reduce irritants and allergic mm -hmm. reactions, but everybody is different. So, that right. skin patch test is a really good um, tip. There's a question here that says, how okay, so should I throw away my makeup if I haven't been using it due to COVID? So that's a good question. So we say six to 12 months, you know, but what if people's makeup been sitting there for a year because they haven't really been putting it on? Um, is the replacement the same? Most products don't have an expiration on it. So I think that's really savvy that you've done that. I'm trying to think right. now my makeup. I don't recall seeing that on there. Um, so what is your thought on that from your from your expertise? What do you think? Um, so I always go with the rule of thumb, six months to a year. Um, of course, if you haven't used it at all, and if they do have an expiration date and you're still good to go, then of course you can still use it. But if you've been dipping and dabbing, um, and then you've like left it out, like a lot of people use their, leave their cosmetics out like in their bathroom. Um, so then you have like different types of bacteria, then I would say, yeah, it's time to probably replace it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, I use that same yeah. rule of thumb with contact lenses. You know, once it's open, right, exactly. you have to throw it away. Now, right. is there a special place that patients should be storing their makeup? That's a point that you brought up in the, you know, in the bathroom. I think a lot of people just mm -hmm, throw it. Mm -hmm. Is there a special way it should be stored, especially if we get these so, palettes and they keep their color? Right. So what I usually tend to do, I always try to leave it in the packaging. Um, so the ours have has of course it has the regular thing where you can like open and close but then i also have a sleeve here that i um also place on top of it and then i try to put it in like a makeup container that is pretty much sanitized um and then every once in a while of course you know you get debris from your makeup that falls into into your your makeup bag so i try to make sure that is clean as long as along with like my makeup brushes and things like that so just having like a container that you can put all your makeup products in and not actually like just leave them out, um, you know, on your sink or by the toilet because that leads to other things as well. <laughs> That's a good <laughs> point. <laughs> That's so a good I point. In, I, I put in, in, in a makeup, like I leave, I try to, uh, of course, leave, 
the um, actual product in the box itself, just as an extra protection, put it into, you know, my designated makeup bag, and then I'll store it, you know, somewhere in my closet or somewhere like that where it's It's less likely, right, to get bacteria or viruses or anything like that. Um, That's a good idea. I usually, I take them out the box, and then I get mad if I want to go back and look at ingredients or something. I'm like, I don't have a box. That's a good idea. Protected. Or a Ziploc bag, a Ziploc Zip- bag. I've done that too. Okay, that those are yeah. smart tips and um, help to. The key is just to reduce infection um, right. and to take home. Take home is you know rule of thumb. Um, doesn't matter how much you use it. Once you start to use it, then your risk for infection is there. So you just want to make sure you stick to the replacement time. And so right. as you're ready to close out, there's one other question I want to ask you. So, you know, talking about being a mom, a wife, and a career mm-hmm. woman. What's the hardest part about trying to balance all of it? Or is, um, is it possible to balance that's it? A good, that's a great question. Um, I feel like there is no balance. I feel like there's uh, prioritizing each aspect of my life. Um, so I'm heavily dependent on, uh, as far as planners, setting a schedule, because um, trying to balance everything sometimes is not realistic. So I just try my best to prioritize, you know, being a mom, being a wife, setting that time, you know, for work, things like that. And that has been helpful, helpful for me. I'm not perfect, but, you know, I, I try my best. Of course, life happens. Um, I do have a great support system as far as my husband, family, friends, Um you know, who, who keep me afloat, but it's just prioritizing, sending a schedule and an agenda and trying my best to stick to it as close as possible. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure you, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, I know. I mean, people ask about, about that all the time. You know, here on social media, work-life balance and people have conferences. Right. And like, there's no such thing as work-life balance. This, I yeah, no. the infusion. It's all infused, you know. Right. It's infused that my kids would be in here, you know, helping me if I had all our fulfilling orders. My husband, it's just like, this is what we do. This is what mommy does. This is what helps our family. And so everybody just got to right. be involved so that one person, you, you know, don't feel like that you have the weight of the world on you. And it's easier right. to come. Because burnout is real. That's needed. You know, just infuse it all. This is this is what we do. And we're gonna all going to exactly. do it together. Exactly. Um, exactly. So the balance, like you said, is tougher. And so um, I enjoy talking to you. I continue and i love watching you grow um like i said i was Thank so excited when I saw this and i'm like what okay dr moore i can see her doing this this is totally <laughs> her um i'm excited because i'm in the process of trying to revamp the products that i offer in my spa and i want to have more you know besides just liner and mascara i want to be able to offer the eyeshadow right. as well so i will look forward to talking to you more about that yes. so where can my viewers find you and um also give that website out one more time Yes. Um, So I am on uh, social media platforms, Um, Instagram, my personal account uh, will is mostly dealing with like, like you said, trying to achieve the work life balance. Um, Dr. Seymour, which is Dr. S-E-E dot more. That's my personal um, Instagram account. As far as my business account on Instagram and Facebook it's shop. I appeal. And the website is also shop. I appeal as well. And then I also wanted to give a promo to your listeners. Um, So if you are listening and have made it to the end of this show, uh, you can use the promo code ITALKSPA to get 20% off. Did you hear that? I talk fall, you get 20% off. So there are benefits for listening. And so you go <laughs> and purchase some doctor recommended, curated, oversee products that are gonna be safe for your eyes. So you can look good, feel good, and see good. Okay. Dr. Moore, you are awesome. I pray for Likewise. you I pray for the success of your business. Um, and I just you. like to see, you know, people when they take a negative and turn it into a positive. Once again, everybody, thank you for tuning in. My name is Dr. Janelle. I'm the Dry Eye Mentor. I'm the CEO, founder of Brain Eyes Vision Center and Premier Eye Spa. And this is Eye Spa Talk, where we help you connect the dots between beauty and science. And today we had an awesome guest, Dr. Candace Moore. Check her out and check out the Eye Appeal makeup line. You enjoy the rest of your Sunday.